there, Coach Sage of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're gonna to talk about heart rate training mistakes, I think, that are really common that runners get, um, that make, myself included, I make these mistakes. The heart rate monitor, you become a slave to the numbers, it's not always super accurate, and it's not always the way to guide 100% of your training. And what we find is the numbers are all relative. So the first number one mistake runners make with heart rate training is that you don't actually know your 100% maximum heart rate value, right? So, you know, some people say, oh, it's, it's you know, 220 minus my age. That's the formula, that's the number, that must be 100% of my maximum heart rate. Well, it could be, but there's a lot of individual variation with that, right? Heart rate drops as you age, your maximum heart rate will go down uh, each year probably, slowly, uh, maybe at different rates though, and it's a moving target. And if you haven't had a real accurate, like legit VO2 max test in a lab, there's a good chance you do not know your 100% maximum heart rate value. Uh, I had mine tested and I still think I kind of wussed out the last minute of the VO2 max test, so I go up another number but it's not exactly 220 minus my age. And again, it's a moving target. Uh, and you have to have a accurate heart rate strap and reading, and we'll get into that too with different devices. But if you don't know 100% of your maximum heart rate, how are you supposed to know 85% of your maximum heart rate for your threshold training? How are you supposed to know 65% or 70% of your maximum heart rate, right? We have this arbitrary number, and uh, if you don't know your 100% maximum heart rate, how are you gonna even def define your zones of training at sub, sub maximal efforts. So that's the first problem. Uh, legit VO2 max test, you can't just have a heart rate strap on, and which is more accurate than the wrist straps, we'll say, and go sprint around a track or sprint up a two minute hill and be like, oh yeah, I, I was going all out, I hit 100% maximum heart rate. It doesn't work like that. You probably flooded your muscles with lactate and you were probably breathing really hard. It felt like your heart was gonna explode. You were going 100%, but you flooded yourself with lactate before you could actually get up to 100%. Uh, your legs start tying up before you could even get a max heart rate. So uh, yeah, you know, I, I see what your values are at the end of a hard hill repeat session, VO2 max session on the track, doing repeat kilometers, you're running really hard. You get a little closer there. You can get closer in a well-timed VO2 max session. It's kind of the goal of VO2 max, but uh, to have it incrementally climb upwards in a really hard five to 12 minute effort, more like six to eight minute to 12 minute type of effort, uh, the VO2 max test, the treadmill slowly starts going uphill and you're running at a pretty steady pace or you slowly just start increasing the pace at that incremental value and you start maxing out where you're breathing you know, all out, you're in a lot of pain. You have to put yourself in a lot of pain to hit uh, VO2 max and to hit 100% maximum heart rate. And if you just you know, sprint 400 meters all out, yeah, you're, you're feeling the lactic acid burn and your muscles are screaming at you and you had to shut down and you're probably maybe puking and hands on knees uh, collapsing, but there's a good chance that you can't spike to 100% maximum heart rate just in doing one repeat like that. Uh, it doesn't work that way. So the readings, if you don't know 100% max heart rate, there's that problem. Now, the other problem, of course, is uh, the accuracy of different devices. So, you know, chest strap's the most accurate from what we've seen. Uh, a lot of the newer devices, uh, different brands of, of GPS watches, they have an optical wrist strap, right? It's measuring your pulse through your wrist. Not as accurate, huge variation there. I've seen it all the time on Strava. Uh, it, my Garmin 935 is, is pretty accurate, uh, generally, with the wrist strap, the optical, optical wrist strap, and I like that. But you could tell when you look at the data, like today I did this 15 mile run, I don't know what that is in kilometers, um, 28K, 26K, uh, 15 mile, 15 and a half mile run, you see it on Strava there, first couple miles shows my heart rate spiking up to almost 160, which is, it's pretty high for me. I'm breathing pretty hard at 160 personally. Uh, and you know, it's, it's not accurate. It's probably matching more closer to my cadence. And yeah, you'll get a little heart rate spike when you're warming up, but the rest of the time you can see it's, it's a pretty low average between 130 to 140 and then, but it threw off my whole average for the run, uh, average 138. Average is probably a little bit lower than that because of the artificial spike that first couple of miles. It was having trouble picking up my pulse around my wrist, right? Same thing with the chest strap. A lot of times you start off, there's not good uh, conductivity if these uh, straps, these sensors are not 
uh, moist if there's no moisture on your chest from sweat or you could wet them with with uh, water to start off with and their chest straps not fitting in the right spot at the right uh, tightness and you have a lot of chest hair like me uh, kind of a hairy chest uh, that could throw off the numbers as well and you see it a lot of times matching cadence you see uh, interference electrical interference right because it's reading the electrical signals from your heart uh, so that could throw it off as well you know if it's too tight or too loose flapping around it could be uh, really change your numbers for your heart rate. So don't always go by that. And we'll get into the, the VO2 max values and, and maybe stride and, and power readings from power meters for runners too at the end of this. But just want to say uh, you have all these, these inaccuracies. And then I always think it's better not to be a slave to the numbers, not to limit yourself too much. Uh, a lot of people, I think if they're too low with their maximum heart rate number, then all of a sudden they think, oh no, I was going you know, 95% for two hours. You weren't going 95% for two hours, it's impossible. You can't go really more than your lactate threshold, which for most people is gonna be between 85 to 90% for more than one hour. Uh, and so like at the end of a marathon, I'm um, running pretty, not over 90% of maximum heart rate. Maybe at the very end, uh, you're going, you're working 100%, but you can't run a marathon at close to 100% of your maximum heart rate. Maybe you're running at 80% of your maximum heart rate. And the goal is to get up to be able to run a marathon at 85% of your maximum heart rate. But again, you don't know what 100% of your maximum heart rate is. How are you gonna know that? Well, you gotta do workouts at certain paces, and then if you're wearing a heart rate monitor and it's reading accurately, at least you know your number at a certain pace. I know from my experience of running with a lot of heart rate monitors, racing half marathons, doing really hard efforts for one hour, that I could average in the low to mid 160s as a heart rate value average for one hour, and that's gonna be around lactate threshold. I could feel the lactate uh, pulsing too. I've got a lot of experience with tempo runs and, and feeling different lactate values. I know, okay, my lactate threshold's probably around 166, 168 beats per minute right now. Uh, in a couple years, it might be a little lower because heart rate goes down as you age. For another person, uh, say it's a 50-year-old guy that we coach, their maximum heart rate could be higher than mine. Uh, easily and all of a sudden they, they go out and they do a tempo run uh, or they do a half marathon race and they're able to hold 170 beats per minute I can't hold 170 beats per minute for probably more than 20 30 minutes tops so you know totally different age uh, you know they're quite a bit older than me but their maximum heart rate value is a lot higher uh, it's not necessarily a good or bad thing some uh, high school kids maybe their their pulse they're over 200 beats per minute right uh, but other people, it might naturally be a lower scale. So the heart rate values all matter on what your relative range is. And what really matters with efficiency is if you know you could hold, you know, four minute per kilometer pace or, or six minute per mile pace on a flat track at, you know, you're going to average this heart rate. At least you know those relative values. And the goal of training, of course, is to be able to run faster over longer distances and not have the heart rate spike up too much because you get too high of a heart rate and uh, you're going to develop too much lactate, lactic acid, and you're going to have to slow down due to that. Uh, if you're doing a longer race like a marathon, the slowing down factor is from muscle cramps, muscle fatigue, and glycogen depletion and dehydration and things like that rather than lactate values. You're not running a marathon at 100% maximum heart rate, not even close, even though you're trying 100% at the end and there's a lot of pain. Uh, so there's that as well. Then we see things like uh, the Moffatone method, right? Moff method, where you take an arbitrary number like 180 and subtract your age from it and then plus or minus, you know, three to five beats per minute here and there doesn't work as well. You're taking an arbitrary number and you're trying to subtract down to find this zone. If I did MOF method, I'd have to run really hard every day and it'd be overtraining, right? Uh, not overtraining because my heart and lungs can't handle it, but overtraining because the skeletal muscular fatigue and stress is too high. Uh, but for other people in different pace ranges, it's so slow that they have to walk on their easy days almost. So it's not a good indicator of things always. And on our sage sagerunning.com training plans, we have pace intensity spectrums with these different relative zones. And we say, okay, conversational pace, easy pace, it should correspond to around 65 to 70, maybe 75% of your maximum heart rate or maximum perceived effort. 
uh, and then tempo zone, you know, is going to be in the, the orange or red here, and it's going to be between, you know, up tempo, 83% maximum heart rate, and then you get into 90% and we're crossing the lactate threshold. But it is kind of just an arbitrary number system if you don't know your exact values and you don't have an accurate heart rate meet reading on every single minute of every single run and workout. That being said, it goes along really well with perceived effort also uh, until you get into like the marathon and you're trying 100% in the last 5K, but maybe your max, your reading, your heart rate readings are only only 80%. It's because you're bonking, you're depleted on glycogen, right? Uh, and you can't sprint a marathon. Uh, so there's that. It's all these relative numbers, and it's the same thing with devices like uh, Stride, Power Meter, Foot Pod, right? It's not going to be super accurate if you're sprinting up a, a technical trail hill versus if it's a smooth track hill or a smooth road type of hill, right? And how it calculates how many watts you're generating uh, is a little more convoluted than, say, if you were on a bike with a power meter, right? Power meters on cyclists, with cyclists and, and bikes is the gold standard. Uh, it's easy. The mechanics are easy to generate power when you're pedaling, but when you're running, uh, and you're trying to use an accelerometer on the foot pod, there's gonna be some more margin for error. So I wouldn't always rely on, okay, I could hold 300 watts of this. Well, what does 300 watts really mean? And I, I did take physics in college, I do know uh, how to calculate power and things like that. But there's a lot of things that aren't exactly controlled in devices like that. And it's the same thing with the technology on GPS watches. You have uh, these watches that tell you, oh, your VO, your estimated VO2 max is 80 now. And you're like, wow, I'm the same as Steve Prefontaine probably. Uh, first of all, VO2 max doesn't mean necessarily you're gonna run super fast, uh, but it's not gonna be accurate because it's a wrist strap watch that I don't know, I tried to calculate your VO2 max based on these really arbitrary things like heart rate values and things that it's not even accurate on. Uh, so there's a lot of variation there. Um, and so I wouldn't put a lot of stock in all these numbers, even if you have the heart rate strap and going on heart rate training. Again, we use them extensively in our sagerunning.com training plans, but we also used perceived effort. How did you feel? We also used exact goal pace, race pace efforts. You know, what have you actually run a recent half marathon in? What have you run a, 10, a recent 10K in? What is your goal pace for the marathon? You know, if you want to crack three hours in the marathon and get a Boston qualifier, uh, you have to be able to run at 652 per mile pace. And so we know from that that you have to be able to be doing some tempo workouts at probably faster than 640, maybe 635 per mile pace, right? Uh, so we know your lactate threshold has to be significantly faster than marathon pace. And what the heart rate value reads when you do those workouts uh, could be, it's all relative. It's all relative uh, to your personal genetics and your personal training experience, and then your personal perceived effort. And so there's a lot of things intertwined here. Don't be a slave to the numbers. Don't always believe the heart rate monitor. Uh, that's my big takeaway here. Uh, but it is fun to geek out on the data, and I do use all these numbers, and I think they're very useful, but realize, know what your 100% maximum heart rate value is, it's really hard to know that unless you've actually had a legit VO2 max test in the lab, and even those, could show really crazy uh, VO2 max values with lab error, the testing facility, how well they induced uh, maximum heart rate, things like that. So a lot of stuff to geek out on. Thank you so much to all the Patreon supporters for really making this possible. Been doing some more travel vlogs, getting ready for the Rotterdam Marathon, training talks, you name it. Subscribe on here for more of these training talk types of videos. Uh, be sure to check out our website, sagerunning.com. Coach Andy and I uh, develop training plans on there. You can check them out. Free downloads as well our pace intensity spectrum chart, and uh, check out my other video on heart rate training. Thanks so much, guys. Stay tuned for more.